Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming, and on this video, I'm going to show you uh, how you can make a gilded oyster shell cross. Um, also, I'm going to show you how you can make these awesome little salt and pepper, I think they're called mills. Um, which I have had these in my uh, china closet for a long time, so they're probably, the pepper and salt is probably a little dusty, but anyways, it's going to be really fun. You're going to be surprised how easy this is. Oh gosh, I didn't check my E6000. looks like I will be able to get it open, so let's start at the very beginning. Okay, I have done my gilding a lot of different ways over the last four and a half, five years. Um, I started out gilding using the maker studio this is size this is the special blue and then using their leap uh, which it's not real gold but anyways and that is a beautiful way to do gilding however and let me know if you want some info on this they have silver gold and copper however what i have discovered is that there's a super duper easy way. So easy. It's a little smelly, but it's so much easier. This is called liquid leaf, and I've worn all of the labeling off of my bottle. It's gold, and you're just gonna use a paintbrush and paint it on, that's it. Super easy. So, um, okay, so where do you get oyster shells? Uh, well, you can get them at the grocery store. <laughs> by buying some oysters to cook for your family or to do raw. You can get them at restaurants and bars. You can ask um, the staff there if you could have some. Um, or maybe you live in a part of the country where you can go out into the water and get oysters. In my experience, I have found that it's kind of hard to get the oysters super clean, the shells super clean after, and not smelly. However, um, I have spoken with other people. I just was conversing in uh, some comments with a lady who was telling me that she just puts her oyster shells outside in the sun for a couple of weeks and that cleans them up and resolves everything. For me, it's easier to just order them on Amazon. And if you're interested, I would be glad to share a link. There's multiple sizes of oyster shells. Um, there's also different shapes and different kinds of oyster shells, but we're going to use a variety of what I have on hand. And before we start that, I want to show you some projects that I've made in the past. Okay, this is an oyster shell that I gilded using the gold leaf from Maker Studio, and I decoupaged this pretty little bird on it. Here's another one that I did that way with the actual gold leaf, and I decoupaged a napkin on it. Now, when you are doing decoupage, you're going to want to paint it white, one or two coats before you do your decoupage. Otherwise, you'll be able to see this through the paper napkin. But I just used matte Mod Podge, and... Um, it was super easy. Here's another one that I did. This was not a, not a napkin, it was some tissue paper. And these are not oyster shells, but these are just really big uh, scallop shells that I have done in the past. This one's the gold leafing from um, Maker Studio. This one is the liquid gold leaf. So, there are tons of things that you can do. And I just showed you also the um, salt and pepper cellars, that's what they're called, these things right here, with, um, with these big shells. I'm going to show you how to make those, too. The other thing I've made with oyster shells is napkin rings. And for these, I used some oyster shells that I think I ordered online that had a hole drilled in them. Anyways, I made four. I didn't do anything super fancy to them, but I think they look pretty. And I believe for these that I used my good old favorite 
gold ink pen from magnoliadiy.com. So you can see that that gold is a little more, um, it's a little more muted than this one, which is the liquid gold leaf. All those things, all those different ways are just fine. So there are tons of things that you can do. You can do these garlands, um, you could do a little jewelry dish, and you can get oyster shells from an inch and a half up to five inches. The only thing is the bigger shell you use, the heavier it's going to be to put it on your project. So I have been working on some of these. Um, let's go ahead and let me show you how to use the liquid leaf. First thing you're going to do if you ordered them uh, on Amazon or anywhere else is you're going to want to clean them off because they were super dusty when they arrived. And then I'm just going to open my liquid leaf. And I'm using a small cruddy brush that I'll toss when I'm finished with this project. And I'm just going to, and I can give you an Amazon link for this liquid leaf too. Um, and then you're just going to basically start painting it on. And you need to decide, do you like a thin line or do you want a thick line? And do you want to go all the way out to the edge or not? So here's an example where I did not go all the way out to the edge. Um, and here's, here's an example where I did. The, um, the edges of these oyster shells are going to be rough. So just be aware of that. Um, they're going to... Uh, you know, this was a living animal. They're going to look, some of them look pretty scraggly. Uh, but I just think they're beautiful. And I love crafting with them. So let me just show you real quick. We're going to need this one. And then next I'm going to show you how to make the inside of them look, these are hard to hold on to, look um, sort of shiny. I'm just going to use some uh, silver wax. I know I have used paint before, but I can't remember what it was. And I don't have that on hand. So silver wax works just fine. Okay. And you can do however many coats you want. However thick you want it to be. I mean, this just goes on so quick. It's a lot easier process than gilding with size and gold leaf. It's also easier than using a pin. Okay, so let me put this here so I remember not to fuss with it. Um, oh, and let me show you the salt and pepper sellers real quick. So I did this one before I came out. This is not an oyster shell. I think this is... I don't know what kind of shell this is, a scallop or clam shell. Um, if you're gonna do a salt and pepper cellar, you wanna see shell that has a white interior so it doesn't look weird. And um, you want one that has kind of a deep, uh, you know, it's deep. <laughs> so for that, it's the same process. You can spray these when you're all done if you want with a clear matte sealer spray. You don't necessarily have to. I'm not putting the gold leaf, this uh, liquid leaf, all the way in, so my salt and pepper is not going to actually be touching it. Um, and I'm not going to do anything crazy like throw these in the sink or in the dishwasher or anything. Um, I think it would be really fun, though, to have multiple sets of these on your table uh, if you're entertaining over the summer. And you could invite all of your friends or family members to take a set home with them because they just cost absolutely nothing to make. So anyways, that is basically the process. And I won't keep doing that because that is super boring. Okay, so 
How do you get them to look kind of shiny? Just dry this off. All right, what you're going to want to do if you're going the, the wax route, I'm using this silver Maker Studio embellishing wax. I am not sure if they still offer this, but I will look when I'm all finished. And if anyone wants that information or the information on the actual gold leaf. And I'm just going to take a little piece of a cut up painter's drop cloth. And these are all dry and ready to go. And you can see how it's not bad looking, but it's kind of flat. So I'm just going to take my embellishing wax. on the inside and it is a subtle difference between the one that has wax and the one that doesn't uh, but I think it's I think it's worth figuring out how you want to add that little shimmer to the inside so let me just get these other ones um, waxed and then we'll move on to the next thing so several of you guys have told me that you have made different things using oysters um, and I saw pictures today from several of you guys when I made my announcement what we were doing. And um, I saw that the inside of your oyster shells looked kind of shiny. So I would love to know, and I'm sure everyone else would love to know, what kind of a product have you used on your oyster shells to get that sort of shimmery look? Tell me in the comments if you have a recommendation. And I'm just going to take a clean piece and just wipe these off. Okay? And now there's lots of options. Oh, and let me show you this while I have this out. Like I said, there are lots of different sizes and kinds of oyster shells. Some are flatter, which would work ideally for the cross, but I only have this one that's pretty flat. Some are bigger with really rough edges. Some have these funky kind of white spots in them. They're all different, which I think is what makes them special. Um, okay, so what can you put them on to build a cross? Well, there's lots of things that you could do. You could use a stretch canvas in white or black. These are from Dollar Tree. They are 8 by 10. They're $1.25. They also have burlap stretch canvas that I have never been able to actually find in any of the local Dollar Trees here where I live. But these would work just great. Um, I today am going to use this piece of old wood. This was a piece of wood that I picked up for $1.00 when I was in Kentucky a month and a half ago at my um, Circle Sisters business retreat with Brooke Riley from Refound. We went to this um, awesome place that had all kinds of treasures and I picked up some of this wood. So I'm going to do a cross on this and I am going to use is a disaster. I'm going to use a combination of hot glue, which this is my preferred 
Gluing device, it's a sure binder, cool shot, under $10. You can get it everywhere, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, Joann's, um, and then some E6000. The hot glue gives you the instant adhesion. The E6000 is what's going to help it to have strength to hold up over time. So let me grab a paper plate. Can I find one that isn't completely covered in paint or something? Okay, and let's fiddle around. I want my cross to have um, one piece at the top and then the arms of the cross and then two pieces at the bottom. And I think it's just a matter of fiddling around to get the design that you like and the placement, how you want your oyster shells to lay on here. And so I was going to use this one, which is the one that we just did. I'm not sure that it's fully dry though. Let's see. Nope, it's not. We'll put that one on last. But I was going to use this one because it's also small. Can you guys kind of see? Let me scooch my camera back a little bit. And um, let me also just remind you guys that I am a complete amateur at all this stuff. People are always saying, you need to do this or that. You need to have an overhead, have overhead camera while you're working with your talking and everything. You need to have even more lighting, which I have three huge lights on right now, plus all my uh, three lamps, plus my overhead light. People are telling me stuff like that all the time. I'm like, you know what? That sounds great, but I am not a professional. And I am just doing the best I can because I am not great with technology. Okay, I think let's start with the bottom shell. And I'm going to put, I'm trying to figure out how it's going to lay. love this one. Um, okay, do I need a bigger one for this in the center? No, I like this one, I think. Okay, so let's do this one. So what do you guys think? Do you think you would uh, make something like this? I've been wanting to do this project for a long time, a long time. And I don't know, I just woke up this morning thinking, today is the day. Let's make a gilded oyster cross. Okay, let me get another glue. Um, E6000 on first because it doesn't need um, to be put down quickly and then I'll do the hot glue last. Okay. I don't know where I'm going to put this in my house but I am going to put it out for sure. Okay, let me get my little heating device and let's dry that one so that we can do the last two. And then I want to talk about another idea, so don't leave yet, for these kind of seashells. I picked up a bag of this kind of seashell at Goodwill and you can do a cross 
with this on those little canvases and it would be very pretty as well. Um, so stay with me. I have ordered oyster shells on Amazon three or four times over the last five years or so that I've been doing crafts with it. And um, I also ordered this liquid gold on Amazon. So I have links all ready to go to share with you guys if you want to look. And I'll come back and add the, the shimmering wax, the silver wax, to that one when I'm all finished because I don't want to mess up the gilded edge. I'm just looking to see how this is set. Where do I need to put my blobs? And then we'll move on to this other idea. I'm going to put a, a, some kind of a hanger on the back of this. What do you guys think? Isn't that pretty? It's rustic, but it's elegant, and um, you just absolutely cannot go wrong with a cross. Um, I have seen flowers made with these, too, and they're really pretty. So here's the first one. All right. So then going back to this, let's use the white one. You can use any kind of seashell and you can gild any part of it, front or back. It's totally up to you. You could do polka dots, you could do whatever design might get you excited. I wish I knew what these seashells were called. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Okay, so I would, if I was doing them this way,
then I could put the right here and we could totally gild the edge. Where's my little brush? So it could be this way or it could be the other way. But honestly, I think with this one, I would turn them upside down. because that, that looks interesting to me. Lots of people on. If you're liking this project, let me know in the comments. Feel free to sprinkle. That is the thing that helps my little page here grow the most. Um, feel free to ask questions. Let me know if you want this information about this liquid leaf or about the oyster shells. And I will be glad to get that to you in a comment. I'll just, just say supply list or something like that or oyster shells or liquid gold leaf. Probably we'll finish this one up off camera, but I want to give you the main idea, the gist of it. Okay, how am I going to pick this up? That's the question. I guess it doesn't matter because I have gold leaf all over my hands anyways. So see, I did around the top of the shell. And then I did these two little sides on the bottom. And I think that would be very pretty to do here. And then if we wanted to get crazy, we could use this liquid gold leaf and a sponge to do the edges of our canvas. What do you guys think about that idea? So, that's basically what I wanted to share with you guys right now. Um, there's a zillion different things that you can do with oyster shells. Let's, let me just show those to you one final time. This. You can make um, napkin rings like these that I made at least two years ago. I made these very simple, and for these, I'm pretty sure I used the MagnoliaDIY.com gold ink pen to do the edges, and these ones came with a hole already drilled in them. Then you can do all kinds of pretty little ring dishes and stuff using decoupage, uh, a napkin, but here's what I want to tell you about that, just to remind you. If you're going to decoupage, you need to paint the inside of your shell so that this dark spot goes away. Otherwise, you'll see it through your um, napkin or tissue paper or whatever you're decoupaging on there, and it, it will look kind of messy. So you definitely need to paint it first. But here's just a few examples. And if you order, I'm going to look on Amazon before I get started answering questions, I'll look for some shells that, um, that, one, that uh, have the um, holes drilled in them. So you can do all kinds of pretty little things. You could make them into some ornaments. Um, you can do with other shells, these little salt and pepper cellars. And you can use this liquid gold leaf you could use um, some actual gold leaf from Maker Studio if you're interested in the size, which is special glue that you need, or the leaf. It looks like this. Just let me know, and I'd be glad to get you that info. Or you can use the pins, like I said. So there's lots of options, but in my experience, what I am finding is that this is by far the easiest, and it's like or nine dollars or maybe even less so it is not expensive we're doing shells Carla we're gilding oyster shells and we're making crosses so I will finish this thing up off camera and this is the one that we actually did 
I wish I would have scooched this one up a little bit closer. I wonder if I could possibly get that. There. I'll fiddle with it off camera. Um, anyways, hope you enjoyed this easy project. It really is easy. Let me know if you want any more info or if you have any questions. Well, hey, Lisa Scott, how are you doing, friend? Sister-in-law? Okay, have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Do with this or do with this. This is much better. Say something to me in the comments. Feel free to sprinkle. Check to see if you've liked and followed this page. All that normal good stuff. Um, if you're watching on replay, you can do all that stuff too. You can ask questions on replay. But I'll put some, I'll drop some links to the oyster shells and the liquid gold leaf uh, in the comments. And I'll get close-up pictures later today. And I will see you guys later. Bye, everyone.